Welcome back for another video on wireless communications. I'm Kathy Nelson, a telecommunications engineer. In my first video, we talked about how signals propagate at different frequencies and how signals at lower frequencies travel farther than higher frequencies. In this video, we're gonna go through the actual calculations of these signals because this is how we determine where communications towers are located, what antennas to use, what coaxial cables to use, etc. This all goes into what's called a link budget and it's a very important component of wireless network design. Before we get to the link budget calculation, we need to understand the decibel and why it's used. A decibel is the difference or ratio between two signal levels and is used to describe the effect of system devices on signal strength. For example, a cable may have 6 dB signal loss and an amplifier may have a 15 dB of gain. This is useful since signal strengths vary logarithmically, not linearly. Since the dB scale is a logarithmic measure, it produces in simple numbers for large-scale variations in signals. It is very useful because system gains and losses can be calculated by using simple addition and subtraction. Every time you double or halve the power level, you add or subtract 3 dB to the power level. This corresponds to a 50% gain or reduction. A 10 dB gain or loss corresponds to a tenfold increase or decrease in signal level. A 20 dB gain or loss corresponds to a hundredfold increase or decrease in signal level. In other words, a device, such as a cable, that has a 20 dB loss through it will lose 99% of its signal by the time it gets to the other side. Thus, big variations in signal levels are easily handled with simple math. We will note these ratios as they compare to a watt or a milliwatt. So our powers are converted, you will see them in dBm or dBw. A 100 watt signal is either 50 dBm or 20 dBw. The m or w is extremely important in these equations. Gains or devices that make a signal stronger are devices such as antennas and amplifiers. Losses or equipment that make a signal weaker are things like coaxial cable and connectors and free space path loss, which we'll talk about in greater detail in an upcoming slide. If you look at communication towers or even rooftops of buildings or water towers, you can typically see antennas that may look like this. These types of antennas are called panel antennas and are typical of cellular networks. Coaxial cable is a type of cable that is used for wireless communications that directs the radio signal from the radio to an antenna, keeping the signal mostly within that cable until it reaches the antenna. Coaxial cables are made up of a center conductor, a shield, insulation, and a jacket. While you may be used to seeing a thinner, flexible coaxial cable that may plug into your cable modem or cable TV, those types of coaxial cable have a lot of loss in them meaning the signal loses a lot of its strength as it goes to the cable. This is fine for a short run, but when you're talking antennas that may be on top of a communication tower, much larger coaxial cables are used that may be 7 8 inch or even an inch and 5 8 Additionally, the losses a signal experiences vary by frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the losses. To determine the signal loss within a coaxial cable, we typically use a chart provided by the coaxial cable manufacturer, which provides a loss in dB per 100 feet by frequency, and we can do a simple calculation to determine the expected loss. The RF signal propagates within the shield. The goal is to keep as much of the signal within the cable and the interfering signals out. As we saw in the first video I did, a radio frequency signal leaves the radio, goes up the coaxial cable where it loses signal, to the antenna which amplifies that signal, over the air where it again loses signal and into the receiving antenna where the signal is amplified, down the coaxial cable where it again loses signal and into the receiver of the receiving radio. We can put all of this into a link budget calculation. The receiving power is the sum of the output power from the transmitter plus the antenna gain minus transmission system losses, which are the losses from the coaxial cable system and connectors, minus free space path loss, which is the loss as the signal goes through the air between the antennas, minus any miscellaneous losses, which can come from the loss as a signal goes through trees, buildings, walls, etc., plus the gain of receiving antenna, minus any losses in the receiving coaxial cable and connectors. So let's see how this works as we go through a calculation of a radio signal that travels from one radio at a communication tower to a radio at another communication tower. Let's say the power out of the transmitting radio is 100 watts, which is 50 dBm. 
We then subtract the connector loss, the coaxial cable loss, the connectors at the top of the tower, and a coaxial cable jumper at the top of the tower. Because remember, as I said, coaxial cables going up a tower are very large and rigid. When you get to the top of the tower, you need a more flexible cable that can bend more easily to connect to the antenna. We then have a gain as we go through the antenna, a loss as we go over the air, which will show how that's calculated the next slide. We get to another receiver gain at the receiving antenna, a loss as we go through the connectors and the jumper of the receiving tower, a loss is the coaxial cable going down the tower of the receiving radio, and another connector loss, and finally into the radio. Let's talk free space path loss calculations. Free space path loss is the loss of signal experiences as it travels through the air. This loss formula is made up of frequency and distance. If you remember from the first video, an RF signal at a lower frequency propagates farther than a signal at a higher frequency, and the signal is stronger the closer you are to the transmitter. As you move farther away from the transmitter, the weaker your signal will be. Using this formula, we can calculate the free space path loss. Let's use a signal of 600 megahertz, 20 kilometers from the transmitter. We come up with a free space path loss of 114 dB, so we can now put that calculation into our link budget. We'll go through these same losses and gains, but this time we'll subtract the free space path loss. Adding up the calculations, we come up with minus 48.6 dBm, which we can then convert to 13.8 watts. Now, let's look at the same type of loss as we see a signal that goes from a communications tower to a cell phone. We see the same loss and gains as we go through a transmitting radio's coaxial cable and antenna. However, cell phones typically do not have gain antennas. They typically have what is called a unity gain antenna, which means it has no gain. For this reason, cellular signals cannot be received by cell phones for very far. So we're going to use two kilometers to determine what the signal level is when it reaches a cell phone you may be using. As we see our signal propagate from the transmitter, up the tower, through the antenna, over the air, and into the cell phone, we see a receiving signal of minus 36.3 dBm which converts to 4 watts. While knowing these formulas is important and understanding signal losses is important, in reality these calculations are typically done by computer programs. Being able to understand and interpret results, though, is still critical for today's telecommunications engineer, technician, or system designer. I hope this video was helpful with your understanding of signal propagation and link budgets. If you like this video, please give it a like on my YouTube channel and follow me to see new videos. Thank you.